we're back. Hello to all our backers on Kickstarter. Three months since our last update. Sorry to have kept you in the dark. Hopefully you've all received your sweet swag. Here's videographic evidence that the posters were indeed signed, and I assure you, shipped. We relocated apartments and had a rough time with the move from hell, and some kind of nasty month and a half long bug, but we've been working through it all. Here's what we finished. A new shadow system. There's a little title screen <clears throat> comes up and you can select your character. Yeah. So there's Bullocks. So you can see our cool new an you know, shadow system. I'll jump. Oh yeah. Dead. Oh, he's dead. And then we have gears. This is the killer of mini bull oxes. And cobalts combined. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we need, yeah, we need a, yeah. It's because of the gibbs. They need to be limited. No, no they don't. That looks beautiful. <laughs> we now have all of our backgrounds finished. Developed our own scripting language. Here's like, here's, here's our old uh, animation scripting system. As you can see, you know, frame zero specifies timeouts, forces, attacks, and things. And so this is the frame. This is what happens. It was a very simple si system. It just went through line by line. And, you know, it... it did basically, you know, read up to the space, what's his command, you know, big switch statement on commands. And so it was it was pretty simple in the way it worked. The on attack button stuff is kind of a little hack. <laughs> but this, that was our old script system. Um, I went ahead and I rewrote our scripting system. So this is how Bullock's attack looks now. Now it uses a C-like scripting system, complete with functions and return, you know, function parameters and return variables. And, and, you know, it has variables and everything. So we have, this is a exit. This gets called uh, when you leave the attack state. And uh, you know, when, you, when you leave the attack animation, it calls the exit function. This sets it so the attack call back, you know, it sets it to null. And so it, if you didn't set it to null, then it could, you know, it could mess things up. But frame four, I can set forces now, creates attacks. So you know, this is frame nine. If um it's like if it's not a player and they can continue the combo, like can continue combo um asks the AI if it can continue combo, then it's going to go the you know attack function attack C B one. Or else then it's going to set the attack callback and it's gonna set a delay. And so this is exactly and this has everything the old language had, except it's um it's an actual C-like language now. We can do some pretty advanced stuff with it. Which I have already done. Such as? Uh, look, look, here's the jump. Um, here's the main function that gets called before it, it does any of the animation. This is how I do like a little jump cancel. Because, for example, as you can see on frame 3, this is where it applies the jump force. Because, you know, <clears throat> the jump is actually... Uh -uh. It's only applied in the animation. And so this is what actually launches them in the air, this 35. It's giving you a Z velocity of 35. And that only happens on frame 3. And so what happened a lot of people, like you try and do a jump attack really quickly, hit jump and then attack and you do only do a normal attack because you hadn't left the ground yet. <laughs> so since the actual jump force is only applied on flame, frame 3, I have a way to cancel that out. So I can set an attack call, set an attack callback, you know, that just calls the attack cancel, which basically just calls frame three, which I didn't even need to do that. I could just hit frame three. Anyways, um, so what this can do is if you rapidly hit jump and attack, it just automatically launches in the air so you can do your attack. It's a pretty cool system, how you can do conditionals and stuff. So for example, this pr um, fixes a bug right here at the beginning. 
if the previous animation was jump attack, then this is just going to set frame 5, which is the end of the jump animation. This is because I found a bug where if I jump and attack really quickly, um, after you do a jump attack, it resets it back to whatever animation you were had previously, which would, would which would have been jump. And so it would have gone through all this again, hit frame 3, and jumped you in the air. And so by rapidly attacking, you just go higher and higher on your screen. <laughs> Very Cheetahman like okay. William, oh yes, that is true. <laughs> William did not get to see that because I didn't tell him. That Bolox is like swing, 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 and just going higher and higher and higher. So we have a uh, we have conditional, and I think we could, we also have I also have a while loop support. I don't use it though. This is all because of the new animation, the, all, the new scripting language I added. It's um I have just the basic scripting language. Um, here's a my different token types. And so I have a lexer that turns the animation script into a token string. And then I have my parser, which takes this token stream and it creates an abstract syntax tree out of it. And then my execution thing, which executes my syntax tree. And so we get lots of cool stuff. But I have all this um, cool stuff with the scripting system. It has variables and stuff now. And uh, let's just do lots of cool things. And I am currently writing code for their cutscene system, which will use the same scripting language for our cutscenes. And so this is a lot faster than the old one, because the old one would just, you know, every single time you played an animation, it would parse it up and try and... <laughs> You know, do all the little stream checking and whatnot. This it just uh, you only has to parse it once, creates a syntax tree and just executes it. So it's a lot quicker, a lot quicker. Replaced our old group AI with a sleeker, faster, and sexier system. There's there's been a lot of work that went on. After we did Cobalt's Quest, I started to reprogram parts of dungeons um, using what I learned in Cobalt's Quest to make it basically a lot bug free. A lot more bug free. <laughs> yeah, a lot more bug free. There was lots of issues. The problem with um, dungeons originally was that you had like a control for the player, how the player moves, and you had inf you know an enemy component that was control about how the enemy moves, but that didn't really work that way because the AI actually controlled the, how the enemy moved, and it, it was all messed up. And so I basically refactored a lot of the code, rewrote some stuff, and you just have a single actor component now. And if, it's, it has, if it has an actor component, then it's going to move. All the AIs do is they do like control pad inputs to the actor. So it, um, so this way we could throw, we can have like Rose, actually I did it. I put Rose in the level and I put, you know, I gave her an enemy group AI and she went around and attacked a Bullocks. Probably for something stupid he said. <laughs> we now have a 20% sexier animation system. Oh, and our new music system. Super sexy. Let's take a listen. So we have these, this music loop system. So by changing a single variable, I can specify which loop I want to jump to. And uh, so we have the individual loops, and then we have the transitions that can, be, that can play. So I'll show you what, what um, we mean here. So let me go ahead and play this. Okay. So it's playing the ambient music right now. It's going to loop on that because the value is set to zero. And I'm just going to set it set to one. So it cross faded into a transition, and it's going to play a loop now. And that's looping. So I can set it back to zero. Now that piece was a transition back into the original ambient loop. And there we go. And so we have this music system that we can... In the code, I set it to our, to our trigger system. 
So um, when a trigger fires, I can switch the, va the value of a variable to specify which loop we want to go on, so we can change the different, you know, how the music plays as the level progresses. Beautiful. So, the beta is still a ways away, but expect an alpha version to be made available in a month or two. Those of you who paid for custom sprites, they're coming along pretty well. Those who volunteered for voice acting, we thank you for contributing your lovely voices to our project. Felipe, thank you for all your hard work on our sound effects. Luke, thank you for your wonderful work with our music. Without all of your support, this game wouldn't be as awesome as it is or is going to be. Honestly, we can't wait to receive your feedback on our game. But, we want it to be in a state worthy of being played by you generous people. This has been lead designer William McDonald. Thank you, and good night.